In the international soft drink market, Coca-Cola and Pepsi are the long-term rivals. Whatever market they enter into, they always compete with each other. This rivalry between Coca-Cola and Pepsi is famously known as Cola Wars. But in India, the story is different. Here the story doesn't start with Coca-Cola or Pepsi, but with an Indian brand called Parley, which played a major role in shaping Indian soft drink industry. This story is nothing short of a movie filled with unexpected twist, politics and great rivalry. Be sure to watch this video till the end to get full understanding of this great story. So, without any further delay, let's start today's episode on Cola Wars India. Parle brand needs no introduction. It is an Indian food product company. In 1940s, Parle was at the heights of its success mainly because of one product, Parle Gluco biscuits or famously known as Parle G. This product was so popular that Parle had a huge office in Mumbai for the Gluco brand alone and used to spend aggressively on marketing it. But then something interesting happened. In 1949, Parle decided to enter into cola market by capitalizing on its already popular Gluco brand and hence launched a cola drink called Gluco Cola which sounds similar to Coca-Cola and that's where the problem is. Coca-Cola was not happy with this kind of branding. Although Coca-Cola did not have a presence in India till 1950, it had registered its trademark in India and Cola filed a case against Parle for very similar name which may confuse the consumer ultimately leading to brand dilution parle had to change its cola drink name and the new name given was parle cola but coca cola was still not convinced it again filed a case against parle after a long battle which went on for 2 years parle came under pressure and discontinued parle cola in 1951 but parle was not the one to give up its ambition so easily In 1952, Parley launched an orange-flavored cola called Gold Spot. Gold Spot became an instant hit because it tasted good even when it is slightly chilled. It was popular especially among children who loved the orange taste with a fizz. Over the next few years, Parley led by Ramesh Chauhan put efforts into the beverage business and expanded its presence across India by setting up more bottling plants and franchise network for Gold Spot. By 1970, Parley had a pan-Indian presence through its wide bottling plant network for Gold Spot, and the time was just right to introduce another beverage to capitalize on this investment. With an orange drink already in the portfolio, next obvious choice was a lemon drink. To differentiate itself from the competitors, Parley used a special technique to produce a drink with cloudy look and called it Limka, derived from the phrase Limbuka, which in Hindi means of lemon. The Limka brand launched in 1971 and was targeted ladies who wanted a fizzy non-cola alternative. By the mid 1970s, Gold Spot and Limka had established themselves as strong brands in metros and major cities across India. But there was still a scope for expansion. In the meantime, Coca-Cola was also gaining strength in India through its aggressive marketing and partnerships with bottling units. The battle between Coca-Cola and Parley was getting fierce day by day. and both the companies were spending aggressively to promote their respective brands although parley had established gold spot and limka as a successful brand it never allowed the success to get on its head parley knew that it would not be wise to take on giant like coca cola head on head by introducing a cola beverage and hence chose not to introduce any cola drink and limited its scope within the market for orange and lemon drink gold spot was famous among children Limka was positioned as a drink for women whereas Coca-Cola was famous among youth. While Coca-Cola and Parley were competing to gain market share on the political front things were uncertain. In 1975 under Indira Gandhi government emergency was imposed and lakhs were imprisoned. This had taken toll on soft drink market since outings trips and vacations had taken back seat. While MNCs like Coca-Cola could withstand such shutdown but indian companies like parley which had spent heavy amounts on bottling facilities and their recent expenditure on expansion plans suddenly found it difficult to sustain by 1977 parley was thinking about scaling down its operations and limiting itself to metros but all is not going well for coca cola also the threat was not from parley but from indian government 
In an effort to stop money from moving out of India, government under Indira Gandhi has passed a legislation which requires foreign companies to reduce their stake in their Indian subsidiaries to just 40%. It was called the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act or FERA and government gave two years time to complete this process. Coca-Cola agreed to government rules to be in the market. In early 1977, after the revocation of emergency, general elections were held in which Indira Gandhi lost and the government was formed by Janata Party. One of the key members in this government was George Fernandez. He was also the Union Minister of Industries. He was a nationalist and hated MNCs. His belief was that foreign companies were looting India. Around the same time, Coca-Cola was making record profits out of India, which didn't go well with George Fernandez. He had made up his mind to drive out MNCs from India and as a last resort, tried to hit Coca-Cola where it would hurt the most. We all know that Coca-Cola is highly secretive about its recipe or formula used to prepare Coke and would never reveal it even at the gunpoint and government asked Coca-Cola to reveal their secret formula. For Coca-Cola, options were clear, either reveal its secret formula or leave India and Coca-Cola chose second option. Coca-Cola starts winding up its operations, closes bottling plants and leaves India in 1977. It leads to huge void as there is no cola drink in the market. But George Fernandez had other plans. His plan was to make a Swadeshi cola drink to replace Coca-Cola. This job was assigned to Center for Food Technologies Research Institute or CFRTI. They managed to come up with the best compromise which tested close to Coca-Cola. The government was satisfied with the results and next challenge was to give an appropriate name. The name 77 was chosen to signify 1977, the year in which emergency ended. Huge money was spent on marketing it with the taglines like, for the good times. Although the marketing was aggressive, public response was not up to the mark because people who were habituated to Coca-Cola found it no match to Coke. Before we go further into the story, Let's peek into the business model of soft drink industry, which will help us understand and appreciate the events which will unfold after Coca-Cola's exit from Indian market. In its simplest form, a typical soft drink business comprises of two parties, concentrate supplier and bottling plant. Concentrate supplier provides the concentrate which can be in the form of syrup or powder. The bottling plant mixes the concentrate with water adds carbon dioxide to produce the carbonated soft drink and distributes it to the retail outlets. In case of Coca-Cola, the concentrate supplier was Coca-Cola company which used to supply the concentrate to several bottling plants who would add it to water, carbonate it and distribute it on behalf of Coca-Cola. Most of these bottling plants of Coca-Cola in and around national capital region were actually owned by a company called Pure Drinks. When Coca-Cola quit India in 1977, the operations of bottling franchise Pure Drinks came to a halt. For some time, it was distributing government's double seven cola, but it didn't work out. The owner of Pure Drink, Satwan Singh, who had an entrepreneurial mind, had some other ambitious plans in his mind. He wanted to launch his own brand of cola to fill the gap left by Coca-Cola. And by the end of the year, his team has developed a concentrate formula which tasted similar to Coca-Cola. It was now the time to brand new cola drink by Pure Drink. Since the company was well aware of the fact that customers loved Coca-Cola brand, it chose the name which imitates it, Campa Cola. They were trying to replicate Coca-Cola. Even the fonts and the color of Campa Cola were replica of Coca-Cola. Campa Cola turned out to be successful within weeks. However, its supply was limited only to national capital region and metros. This way, void left by Coca-Cola was quickly filled in by some local brands, the major ones being Campa Cola, Torino, Dixie Cola, Dukes and several more scattered across India. So there was still no pan-India cola brand which could fulfill the void left by Coca-Cola. But where is Parley in the whole story? Parley was still in observation mode because it had already burned its fingers few years ago with cola brand called Gluco-Cola. Parley already had more than 50 franchises across India bottling their gold spot and limca and it was just a matter of incremental effort to introduce a cola drink which could in turn become a pan-India cola drink. 
Ramesh Chauhan leading the Parley Soft Drink Company and the brain behind Goldspot and Limca dedicated himself for this challenging task from the scratch. Since Indians were accustomed to spices, Ramesh wanted a new drink to be spicy and the team experimented with Indian ingredients. Another point to be considered was that the drink had to be fizzy even if it is slightly cool. They worked on this project for months and finally they had a cola drink which was unique. It was Indian in taste. It's spicy, less sweeter and fizzier than Coca-Cola. Now that the concentrate formula was developed, the next task was to come up with a name for this cola drink and this cola drink was named as Thumbs Up. It was a tense moment for the Thumbs Up team for the initial few days after the launch because never before had anybody offered such a unique cold drink. But this brand turned out to be an instant success. Even those who were obsessed with Coca-Cola despite some initial criticism due to strong taste soon accepted and appreciated it. By 1978, Thumbs Up had truly filled the void left by Coca-Cola and in many ways considered more Swadeshi than the government's double seven cola. Because Thumbs Up was not just made in India, it tasted like India. But this is not going to be a cakewalk for Thumbs Up. Real competition starts when Coca-Cola and Pepsi enter into Indian market. Their rivalry and politics will take this competition to the next level. This is not the end but the beginning of new cola wars. Parley was the market leader. It had a monopoly in soft drink market. Riding on the success of Thumbs Up, Parley released a lemon drink called Citra. It used to come in a unique green color bottle and it was marked as the super cooler. Apart from these brands, Parley had Maza, mango drink in its juice department and soda under Bisleri brand. In this manner, Ramesh Chauhan had built a soft drink portfolio with strong and independent brands under Parley Agro. But the king was always Thumbs Up. Thumbs Up had captured significant market share and had become a cult. But Ramesh Chauhan was still not convinced and felt that it had more potential. The idea was to create a campaign which was unconventional and sought to focus on building Thumbs Up as a macho brand. In the mid-1980s, India had begun to witness the rise of masculine brands like Royal Enfield and Old Spice. And Thumbs Up team also wanted to build something on those lines. So they come up with a tagline, Taste the Thunder. The team produced a series of ads showing young men performing all sorts of stunts, emerging victorious and rewarding themselves with thumbs up, suggesting that it is a drink only for those who dare to take risk. Campaign was a resounding success and in fact it is one of the longest Indian advertisement campaign. The tagline Taste the Thunder is still used in latest advertisements of thumbs up. While Indian market was growing but surprisingly no other company could come close to parlay. Campa Cola had already lost significant part of the market share and it looked like it was not even possible to compete with Parley. Enter 1980s, the decade that totally changed the face of India. Major event was Indira Gandhi's assassination. We regret to announce the death of the Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Her son Rajiv Gandhi became the Prime Minister of India. Within few months of assuming power in 1984, Rajiv Gandhi faced with two challenges. One, the socialist economy set up by Jawaharlal Nehru was proving disastrous to Indian growth due to tight controls and widespread corruption. Two, reviving the state of Punjab, which was totally devastated due to Khalistani movement and industries were leaving Punjab state. One of the first decisions Rajiv Gandhi took was to begin the process of dismantling the socialist economy by decreasing government control in the private sector to address the first point. To solve the second challenge, government allowed private companies to set up their business in Punjab. Since Punjab thrived on farming, thanks to the Green Revolution of 1960s, it was decided to allow only those companies which could utilize and enhance the agricultural prospects of the state. Pepsi did not want to miss this opportunity and proposed setting up Agro Research Center to develop new variants of seeds, invest in processing plant for potatoes and tomatoes, and in return wanted the government to allow them to sell Pepsi soft drink in India. After some heated debate in parliament, this proposal was approved. In the summer of 1990, the top three soft drinks of Pepsi, Pepsi, 7up and Mirinda were launched in Jaipur. Now a new player entered into Indian market which can compete with Parley. 
Throughout the year 1990, Pepsi penetrated across the length and breadth of India. For the first few months, Pepsi spent significantly on huge billboards and free samples of Pepsi were distributed to millions of Indians. Coupons were provided in newspapers which could be exchanged for bottles of Pepsi from any retail outlet. Pepsi was confident of winning the taste buds of Indians, but surprisingly, the results of surveys proved otherwise. Although Indians liked the taste of Pepsi, they still preferred Thumbs Up. By the end of 1990, Pepsi realized that India was a tough market to crack and instead of promoting the taste, it had to promote its brand. The challenge for Pepsi was to portray itself as the right choice for customers, especially the youth. Pepsi produced a series of TV commercials to portray Pepsi as the right choice. It was one of the few FMCG companies which tried to capture the cultural diversity of India and hence was quickly able to connect to the masses. Much before Aishwarya Rai became the famous star of the nation, she had acted in Pepsi ads with Amir Khan. Such branding efforts helped Pepsi to gain market share. Due to lack of interest and marketing efforts, Campa Cola started losing market share and scaled down operations. Unable to face such an intense competition, several local cola companies died a natural death. Some of them were acquired by Pepsi and some of these franchises of Parle switched their allegiance to Pepsi. Although Parle was the main rival in early 90s, Pepsi plan was to establish itself before any other MNC like Coca-Cola could enter into India. Hence, Pepsi left no chance in its effort to reach out to the masses and one such medium in India was cricket. Pepsi realized this pretty quickly and jumped onto the bandwagon by sponsoring tournaments and identifying some promising young players like Sachin Tendulkar and Vinod Kamble to advertise this brand. While this rivalry between Parle and Pepsi was going on, Coca-Cola was nowhere to be seen. Waiting for change in policies which could allow it to operate on its own terms and conditions in India. In 1991, Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated and PV Narasimha Rao became the prime minister. His government brought some groundbreaking economic reforms in the form of LPG and allowed private companies to enter into India without any condition. Coca-Cola is back in India. In June 1993, Coca-Cola acquired a bottling plant near Agra and painted the town in red. Billboards with the taglines like "Happy to be here" had dominated the streets of Delhi and Agra. Now the real game starts. Three companies, one market, and all of them fighting for the market domination. Although Parle was the market leader with more than 80% of the market share, catered by 62 bottling plants across India, it was a fragile business model. because parley owned only four bottling plants while the rest 58 were owned by franchises most of these franchises were not happy with ramesh chauhan's autocratic leadership style and they preferred to work with foreign brands like coca cola hence it was very easy for coca cola to hunt down the top bottlers and poach them ramesh chauhan was helpless because almost every week there was a news of one more bottler switching to coca cola If this continued then Parle would end up with less than 10 bottlers thereby losing significant market share and dying a natural death by September 1993 Ramesh Chauhan realized that there was no point fighting with a giant which was on poaching spree and decided to surrender it was a very tough decision to make because these brands were carefully nurtured by Chauhan like his own children and now he had to sell them off with a heavy heart he bid goodbye to his brands and sold them to Coca Cola Although the details of the deal were confidential it was speculated that the deal value is 60 million dollars it was a double bonanza for coca cola because firstly it managed to instantly reach out to every part of india and secondly there was no significant competition because the leader itself was acquired soon after buying parle brands in spite of instantly getting 80% market share and bottling network without much effort Coca-Cola found itself in a tricky situation due to the conflict of brands. You see, Thumbs Up and Coke were cola drinks. Gold Spot and Fanta were orange drinks. Limca, Citra and Sprite were lemon drinks. And it can continue only with one drink in each category. Throughout the world, Coca-Cola always channelized its marketing efforts on its own global brands. And hence, in India also they wanted to follow the same approach. by getting rid of parle brands gold spot was ruthlessly killed on the first day itself to make way for fanta as a musty drink limca was slowly dismantled in few months and next in line was thumbs up coca cola discontinues thumbs up in 1996 and that was coca cola's biggest mistake indians love thumbs up 
when it was discontinued, Pepsi was the better alternative compared to Coke. 1996 was a crucial year and turning point for the Indian cola industry due to Cricket World Cup. In the absence of thumbs up, most of its fans switched to Pepsi thanks to Pepsi's aggressive marketing which had struck a chord with Indian sentiments. That was the year when Coca-Cola finally realized that by killing thumbs up, it was literally serving significant market share to Pepsi on a platter. Before it was too late, Coca-Cola revived thumbs up and in 1997 the legendary drink returned to market no matter how much coca cola tried to suppress thumbs up it just refused to die coca cola not only revived thumbs up but even gave it so much importance that it used thumbs up as its warrior to fight against pepsi in early 2000s coca cola acknowledged the demand for limka and in 2002 splashed the market with limka ads to announce its arrival the only brand which is still in cold storage now is gold spot and there are no signs of its revival yet however thumbs up is still the leader in cola segment and has been ruling the market for more than 37 years and limka has been quenching thirst for almost 43 years it stands as a testimony to the passion and dedication of ramesh chauhan in building such a great indian brands which would fight the onslaught of global brands and still emerge strong The journey of these brands is no less than those adventurous young men in thumbs up commercials who put their heart and soul into achieving the impossible to taste the thunder. Cola wars is a never ending battle between Coca-Cola and Pepsi, but for now Coca-Cola is the market leader. It controls 50% of the Indian soft drink market, whereas Pepsi controls only 19.6%. Coca-Cola's success in India can be totally attributed to its acquisition of Parley's soft drink business and especially to Thumbs Up. The rivalry between Pepsi, Coca-Cola and Parley is a perfect case study to understand the value of good strategy which can be ruthless sometimes, great marketing and brand building. Companies win only when they understand their customers and communicate the product value effectively because products are made in factories but brands are created in mind. So that's the video guys if you like my content consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to smash that bell icon to be notified every time i release a new video thanks for watching this is curious monk signing off